I've expressed the desire to always be single. That desire has now changed and it's all thanks to my experiences in one particular country. I first want to explain a little bit of the context. So I'm almost 43, still single, never got married. And I came to Southeast Asia as an expat about seven years ago. When I came across here, I lost myself in a whole world of new dating opportunities. I was spending time in Bangkok and Saigon. I've since relocated to Singapore, also Chiang Mai and a few other places. And I really enjoyed the path of not settling down, of meeting lots of new people, of feeling like I had something to offer, a bit of value here. This just kept me single. And to be totally honest, I probably got a little bit addicted to all of these fleeting interactions of not actually settling down. So that's a bit of the context as to what's been happening. If you're here watching the video, you might have watched some of my previous videos about why I want to embrace being single, why I'm committed to being single. That was really happening during that period of just embracing this whole lifestyle. The purpose of those videos was to challenge the societal notion of always needing to end up in marriage, that actually there are really viable pathways out there for many people that don't necessarily want these things, that wanna live differently, that might wanna retain their freedom and stay single. So I do have a series of videos exploring that, but I have been spending more time in one of these countries lately that has totally caused me to reevaluate this desire to be single. The country is Vietnam and to explain why this country caused such a significant rethink on my part, I have to explain one of my deeper insecurities and that is around losing myself in a relationship. I end up becoming a little bit needy and a little bit dependent on the approval of my partner. And I think that if I reflect deep down about this, that that's a core reason why I've been so attracted to the single life because slowing down and actually connecting intimately with someone is a very scary thing because in my case I end up giving that person so much power over my own happiness, over my own self-acceptance, over my own general state of fulfillment. I realized that I've been battling with something for a long time and that is the idealization of the perfect partner. This is where I've always got that image of perfection in my mind I'm always comparing people I meet against that image and no one ever stacks up. One of the kind of hidden problems is that I've actually got the fear that the person I'm going out with also has that image of perfection. And there's a bit of insecurity of never actually being able to live up to those standards. Obviously a whole lot of issues here and we've all got many different issues around relationships, but these are some of mine. Big generalizations here, of course, but sometimes there's a bit of truth in the generalizations. What I see in Vietnam is that people really date to commit, to take that step forward. It's actually something I've been frustrated with where I end up going on a date with someone and I feel like very early on, the person I'm dating is wanting to commit quickly to even before they get to know who I am, my character, what makes me unique, what the unique connection can be. But they're really ready to take that step forward and to commit. But lately, especially as time has got gone on, I'm just really recognizing how important family is. I mean, I'm really lucky to have a very close family with my parents, my brothers. I've got some really close friends as well that feel like family. I think that those family units, when you can really create something strong at the core of your life, it provides a lot of fulfillment in the way you're living your life right now, but also through the generations. I mean, as we get older, I think that potentially having kids in a family can provide a lot of fulfillment, a lot of support. We can all support each other across the generations. That approach to dating is exactly the antidote to these insecurities that I've got around never quite measuring up, around my partner never quite measuring up because the people in Vietnam have such a unique commitment and loyalty to this family structure that I think that's what will bring you through these insecurities. You can really partner up with someone and create something very resilient that stands the test of time. Now the thing is that this isn't unique to just Vietnam and I have discovered being in Southeast Asia that the family structure is very strong across many different countries. It's strong in the West but in a different way. One of the big challenges with dating in Vietnam that I've noticed, actually this is also across all Asian cultures, is the influence of the family. 
it's something that I think it's one of these universal lessons that we all need to go through, which is that we've got to understand that our parents want a certain kind of life for us. They've got all of these expectations. They very often, whether consciously or unconsciously, want to shape the path that we live. Usually for good reasons, they want us to be happy to live a really good life. But in Asia, it's super strong. I mean, the family structure is so strong that it's very difficult for someone to break out of that. I think it's a little easier in a lot of Western countries where I think our parents are a bit more conditioned to know that, that people need to live their own life, that individualism is a stronger thing. Individualism isn't as strong in many Asian countries, at least the ones I've been to. In a dating context, when you are getting to know someone, there's really strong influence of the parents to the point where the person you're dating, the feeling I've gotten is that a lot of the decisions aren't really her own decisions. It's just so heavily shaped by her fears of what her parents would think about certain situations. So that is one of the, I think, more challenging parts of dating in Southeast Asia as an expat. That's one of the cultural differences here. It's super strong. Uh, if you've got experience yourself, please uh, share more in the comments below. I'm just sharing my own particular experiences and I'd love to know whether you think this is consistent with your own experiences as well. Um, but I have found that to be one of the more probably negative sides of dating in Vietnam. So it kind of goes both ways. I mean, the, the strength of the family structure is the thing that's kind of pulling me out of this pathway that I've been on where I've been embracing that single life, wanting the fleeting interactions, to then slowing down and realizing that these insecurities I've got are actually something that I can sh uh, face up to, that I can get together with someone, face them together, and still really go through that path of getting to know someone, of committing, of going through the ups and downs, of really being able to create that family structure myself. So there's positives and negatives of it. These are my experiences. I wanted to share something a little more personal because I talk. This channel is all about helping people go through creative breakthroughs in life, going through personal reinvention. And this is one of the personal reinventions that I'm going through myself. After many years of being single, I'm doing my best to look at the context around me, the countries that I'm spending time in, and not just to be an individual here who is figuring things out alone, but I want to live the kind of life where you can allow yourself to be shaped by the culture around you as well. So that's always going to be a real balancing act. Um, you never want to lose yourself and end up being shaped by the expectations of a culture. But at the same time, I don't think that we exist as individuals in isolation from the world around us. We're part of nature, we're part of these incredible ecosystems and cultures are just such a huge part of the world we live in. And so yeah, I wanted to share a little bit of that. And if you are new here, please do subscribe to the channel because I am gonna share more and more stories of personal reinvention, uh, creative breakthroughs. In fact, the next video to come out is on the seven life lessons that I've learned in my 40s that I wish I could have known sooner. So if you appreciate some of what's being shared in this video, please subscribe to the channel so that you'll see that video next. See you next time.